kids, episode 62, talk a lot with James Lott Jr., I'm back, no big intro, ow, oops, <laughs> hi kids, I'm doing all kinds of stuff tonight, today, it's been a long week, a long week, and I was planning on relaxing this weekend, but I have work to do, but I'm going to try to relax a little bit. We're going to see what that looks like. Hope everybody's okay. I'm fishing up a couple of little things. Um, I have some great things. I, you know, this week I did, a, I did very few interviews. I did very few um, releases. I kind of kept it just um, quiet. Uh, I have, but now I'm coming back. I'm, back. I'm coming back. So I'm starting to kind of get back and see things. I'm in a list of things I need to do. I uploaded some, some videos that I have recorded before. Um, I'm finishing up a... That's good. Um, yeah. Hi, everybody. It's 10 2 I'm just kind of finishing up a couple of little things. Let me do that. Let me close that. Let me do this. Um, this goes down there. Done. This goes. Oh, that's done. Hope everybody's, hope everybody's okay. Hope everybody's, everybody's doing okay and hanging in there. I got two shows to upload, but now we're going to stop. Lauren B. Martin. Lauren B. Martin. Oh, my goodness, you guys. I have the quarantine hair. It is crazy today. We don't care because it's late night. This is my talk show. My late night talk show. This is what I do. I show you the real James behind the scenes. And this is hair, hair for days, kids, hair for days. It is as woolly as it looks. It's as woolly as it looks. Um, I'm doing good. I may, I had a, I have some really good stuff happening. I kind of took a break this week. Um, I've been doing lots of talks on race and sexual orientation this week. Uh, I am worn out. I should have a drink tonight. We got James is gonna make a drink. I think I'm gonna drink out of my fancy glass. I'm gonna show you something, you guys. This is from Key West. Sloppy Joe's in Key West. Look how fancy that is. We're gonna, we're gonna make a drink. Let's make a drink with James Law Jr. I had a long week. Long week. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna go. And I'm gonna turn the light on. And make myself a drink. That's what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. Some vodka. Let me rinse this out really quick. I haven't forgot this little fancy thing in a long time. Vodka. Just keep pouring. And I can tell you guys, diet crayon. I'm not kidding, I do diet. And a splash of orange juice. Mm, yeah. It wasn't good. And that's that, kids. I'll stir it in the other room. What's we gonna do? Um I take breaks. I am very big on taking breaks. I do not want Bell's palsy again, so I do take breaks. Um, I do 10 million things, as you guys all know. I still find time to do them because I'm organized. There we go. My drink. Oh. A lot of vodka. I'll let this sit for a minute. So, kids, 
I am making some moves, little by little. And um, so I will be... Oh, yeah, the, the love boats, you will be making another run. What was I to do? The hand, the bartender. Uh, you wouldn't mention a love boat because you're forever and a day years old. So, um, what I was going to say, oh, yeah, so I this week was just mostly, if, if you watched my interview today that I did, with Roxy Stryer uh, live on the Ro live with Roxy or whatever. Be prepared because uh, apparently I make people cry. I'm hearing that more and more. Um, I really broke down my life to people, the atrocities that I've been through. Um, I gave examples. So if you watch that interview, I should give you by a chance to know that it's it's very very deep, and I am very much an open book. So I talked about some things that happened to me. So you guys are going to just want to warn you that. I'm getting a lot of great feedback from that interview. Um, but I'm also not coming out of the... Not wanting to create that much stuff stuff phase. I'm, now I'm coming back into um, kind of life again. Because uh, every day I do... I'm black every day. So I don't have, this is not some fad or anything. And plus I also showcase black people on my stuff all the time. So that will continue. Um, but I'm going back to kind of back to my programming. Uh, I'm going to mix in, like I always do, really strong, sensitive content along with some of the stuff that is uh, escapism. And I think that's what we need. I, need. I think we need a little bit of both. Um, so, you know, I'm doing the Girlfriends After Show. I did the pre-show thing. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start record recording the episodes. And put those out. I think I'll probably record them this weekend. And I'm so excited. So I've been talks with several girlfriends, ex-actors. And I want to tell you so bad who they are. But I have to wait till I finalize the transaction. But... Let me just tell you, I'm in talks to some folks. You are going to be like, if you're a friend of fan of girlfriends, you'll be like, oh my God, I got some good gets. That's all I got to say there. I got some good gets. So I'm in talks right now to have them on. One. I'm so excited. So that's coming up. Let me get that, start. Let me get that out this week, the girlfriends after show. Uh, probably, maybe I might release the first episode if I record it tomorrow. Maybe I'll release it tomorrow, or Sunday. I'll release it Sunday. I'll do that. And the Studio City After Show, I, I sat down with Scott Turner Schofield, and he's a trans actor. We had an amazing conversation. That's coming out Sunday. And he's Emmy nominated. And speaking of Emmys, because Candy Mac has put this together, as, as um, mentioned, I have put together an Emmy panel. Myself, Lucretia Lyon, Walker Ragsdale, and my friend Jerry Waggett, who wrote several soap books back in the day. Uh, knows the soap world. We're going to do a pre-nomination discussion pre-show. We're going to tell our predictions, share some trivia. We're doing it next Saturday. It'll be out Saturday. It's going to be so good. I'm putting together a show rundown right now. The four of us, there will there'll be some shade, I'm sure. Probably by all of us. We all give, I mean, Lucretia uh, Walker and I are all famous for shade. So that's some exciting I have two new books coming out next week. Very excited about that. My sixth album comes out on Monday, Songs from a Dark Place. It's a dark album, kids, a dark album. Uh, and that's coming out Monday. I am finishing up the Vex soundtrack that I'm working on. I uh, decided to scrap, I was talking about this last night, I decided to scrap the two, act, the two songs I thought they don't really fit. I rewrote I wrote two new songs to replace those two songs, and then I was going through my files and I found another song that I hadn't I forgot was for the movie. So it looks like it'd be about eleven or twelve songs for the soundtrack. I'm very excited. Get it out to you guys. Don't know when it'll be coming out, but I'm finishing it all up. Um uh, so waiting for vocals from Homegirl uh, for the duets. But other than that, everything else is moving right along. Uh, we finished, and I also have a couple of new songs working out to you. 
It's going to be really good, folks. It's going to be really good. So I'm working on that. That's going to be next week. Um, I contacted someone that was on General Hospital in 2016. Uh, and hopefully I'll hear from that person to do my GH podcast. Don't want to give away who it is because I just want to make sure, again, I want to finalize it. I'm just letting you know that I'm, I'm kind of back to business a little bit. I'm kind of where I took some time off. Kind of, well, for me, time off. You know, I still did stuff. But I was kind of like, yeah, I didn't have the motivation to kind of go out and, and push anything. So that's kind of moving right along. Um, so that's coming along. Fairview Heights is coming along. Manchester Avenue is coming along. I have a new podcast debuting on when, next Wednesday. I'll be doing some ads for that. Barbells, Books, and Nerddom. And that'll be coming out. The first episode is really good. So that'll be coming out next Wednesday. I'll start doing some promotion for that. My grandson and I sat down and had an interview, which was very strange for me, for my left-handed show. So that'll be out next week, too. I, mean, I, got, a lot, I got a lot of content coming out now. I took a little break. I let everything kind of come out. And I was going to say it next, forever in a day. Apparently, it's coming right along. It's Candy Mac just beat me to the punch. I was going to, I was going to get there. Uh, I was kind of saving the big one for last. Um, so they're coming right along, so that'll be coming out in, in August. So that, that's going on. So I think moving right along. James Lott Jr. is moving it right along. I, I wanted, what I want to do is showcase people, show people that a black man can run a company and can run a media company and um, put out content of all kinds. Um, that's my contribution. We don't just, just because we're black, we don't do just black content. That's just not how that works. We do all kinds of content, some of us, um, because we can do that. Uh, we, we should never limit a black person or put them in a box or tell them what they can and cannot do. We are, we are, we can do just as much as anybody else. So I'm going to kind of show that. Uh, and my work, all my work is very diverse, which is what I do. Like this week alone, I'm showcasing a trans actor, um, a black man, a black woman, a Latino woman. I have, like, I have all kinds of great stuff coming out. Um, and it's just part of my life. This is what I do. I'm not, this is not a fad or, you know, like now you got a black bachelor, you know, that kind of thing. Um, every day is how I live. And I'm going to show people this is what I do. This is how I live. I, I put out content that showcases everyone. Um, but I'm excited. I have a lot of stuff to film. I have like seven episodes of stuff to film. And I'm like, oh, I like not to, obviously not tonight. Like today, James is not going to be doing that today. Um, but I've had interviews for the last two days that have got me lots of attention. And that's been very strange. Uh, try and navigate that. Um, lots of attention. My phone has been dinging and dinging all day long. It's Christina Sullivan, Christina Sullivan, Christina Sullivan. When we get a chance to have life again, we're going to a fungos for, for, for dinner. We're going. We're going. We're going to Mofungos. We're going to have, we're going to have a good Puerto Rican dinner. That's what we're going to do, girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to try to be the Black Aaron Spelling. I want to be a Black Aaron Spelling. I want to be a Black... Well, by renown is Black. The Black Dick. Well, I want to do all that. All that and more. That's what I'm going to do. Because people need to see representation. They need to see somebody who does this. So why not me? And I encourage others to do um, what they want to be doing. I'm doing what I want to be doing. So I encourage others to do that too. I love, I love creating content. I love being involved in content creation. I think it's such a very cool thing. Uh, it's a lot of hard work, which we all know it's not. You don't just wake up and push it together. Um, I love doing it. I love it. It's fun. It's rewarding. It's challenging. It's maddening. It's all of those things and more. But these last two weeks, I have really been focused on the Black Lives Matter movement. I've been doing what I can to be one voice out there um, and share my experience 
being a black man in America. And so I, I feel very rewarded that I was able to do that at least I think 15 times in the last two weeks. I, I've been asked to be on shows and to create stuff. And um, it's been very draining. At times it was maddening. It was, I, I've been attacked on all sides. Um, but you get attacked. When you speak out, you get attacked. That's just how it is. And I work in Hollywood. Um, like I said, I've been black a long time. I'm, I, can, I can take the comments. And some of the comments are really, really rude and mean. And it's just, that's how it is. I'm not going to let them, I'm not going to let them ruin my life that way. So I'm like, I'm just going to keep doing it. You talk shit about me, I'm going to talk louder. That's what that's it is. If you're going to try to silence me, I'm going to start screaming. So I got a big mouth. Can't silence my big mouth. I got enough shade for an orchard of trees. Trust me. I can handle it. I can handle it. I've been around a long time. I have a very thick skin. So um, I have no problem trying to do this. And, I, and so it's been, it's been gratifying to be able to talk to people about this subject. Conversation is very important. I think the world just, we were going a certain way for the longest time. It couldn't continue. It just couldn't continue. Women want their equal rights. The LGBTQIA community wants their equal rights. Trans want their equal rights. Um, black folks want their equal rights. I mean, it's a, everybody wants their equal rights. We're just, we're tired of being told that we can't have, like, we can't be. We're all in America. Come on, folks. We're all Americans. We should be able to have what we want and do what we want with whomever we want. It's like, come on, people. Let's get the program. It's 2020. It's 2020. So these same issues I've been dealing with since 1970, since 1980. Like, it's just, this is ridiculous. Now, I know I, I, know, I know I look too young to remember 1980. That's another story. Unfortunately, I do. And I posted pictures recently of me in 1980. So, can't deny it. I was around. I wasn't a baby. I was actually in middle school. So, it just kind of happens that way. Um, um, yeah, people are, people are liking my, my post about the Emmys. Mm-hmm. That's right, kids. We're going to do our own little Emmy show. I, I, did, I did one three years ago with somebody who's tired, a tired host, and I wasn't involved in any of the pre-stuff. I just was asked, can you come do it? And so I did it. It was unsatisfying, and it wasn't that good. I, I've, I've watched the episode once, and I was mortified, so I've not watched it since. It's on my YouTube channel in there somewhere. I'm not going to tell you where, but it's in there. I have a few episodes in my life that I'm like, ooh, not good. But it's been over a thousand hours of television, so there's bound to be a few episodes that are not up to par in my life. I've had a few interviews I'm like, wow, James, that was not good. And I usually, I'm usually pretty good at my interviews. They weren't good. They weren't good at all. I was like, yikes. Yikes a doodle. I am so tired. Like, my eyes look like they're mere slits. I'm going to sit up and get my drink again. And my fancy glass from Key West. From Sloppy Joe's. Mm. Woo! That's a lot of booze. I think I put too much alcohol in there. I got I to gotta add some um, more juice and shit in there. Mmm. So well, good. I haven't. I haven't even really looked. I saw the Emmy stuff. I haven't really looked at it yet. So I'm going to really look at it this week, and then go from there. I, I like the. I like the. I like the daytime Emmys. Have been releasing um, snippets of, of the uh, of the reels. So I, I, there's some nice reels. Um, there are a couple of categories where I remember correctly. Going to be really hard. I think. I think it's supporting actress. It's going to be really hard. I think every single one of that category is good. If I remember correctly, they're all good. And for younger, you know, you know, I'm I'm rooting for Eden McCoy. If you want to be consecrated, you will have some bad ones. No way around it. It's a learning process. Oh, yeah, that's true. You know, that's true. Oh wait, there's just there's just, there's just some, there's some days that I was not. Yeah, I was not. I was not in it. I clearly was not in it. I was just I, I showed up and I did the best I could, but I was not in. It. I wasn't in it. It just happens. It just kind of happens that way. You know, some days. Some days I'm like, 
I, I, my, my heart wasn't in it. And a couple of times, because I do a lot of research, and I used to get myself ready. There were a couple of times I didn't do enough research. Your first short film stink. Are your short films out for viewing? Can anybody see those first short stinky films? Or are they hidden in the vaults, near to see the light of day again? Mm-hmm. Like, like I said, I have some songs. I have, I have a couple of songs. I hate the songs. I had one producer I tried working with, and we ended up fighting. We were fighting during that. And it was not like good creative fighting. It was bad creative fighting. And I just wanted to get through the session. I hated him. Oh, my God. I wanted to just get through the session. And the songs, not good. Not good. They're not good. I mean, one song, I think he did on purpose, took all my vocals out, basically. And it was like... Um, is this the remix remix? Because I'm like, I don't hear my vocals in here. He like chopped the song so bad, and I didn't want him to. Fi- I didn't even want him to fix it. I was just like, fuck it. I'll just do. I'll just take it home. I just will never release it again. I watch supporting acts because there's some good talent. Because I just mean like, well, you know, like I said, I, when I, once I look at the, the, I saw it when it first came out, but I don't remember who's what. But I'll look at it again because I, I tend to disagree with a lot of people. So it's really interesting to see when we do the show because. Uh, and I remember I saw, I saw one category, and I was like, they all got nominated? Really? I was like, okay. Um, lead actor's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a tough one. I, don't, I, remember, I remember that's going to be a tough one. And then poor Becca Budding, the, the scenes they showed on hers, I'm like, compared to the other actresses, I'm like, that's not good. So, man, but that's, but other than that, but that's all I'm going to say, because I'm not going to talk about the Emmys on here. You're going to need to watch my show to talk about the Emmys. So I'm not gonna talk about it on here. I'm not, gonna, I'm not giving away. I'm not giving away the milk for free. So I'm not gonna continue. I'm not gonna talk about it. So you guys can talk about it amongst yourselves. I'm not commenting because I want to. I want to say it for the show. See, so, yeah, I try to produce a show for you people. You guys want to talk about the, the one I'm gonna talk about on the show. You know that's what goes on. I have to stop. Stop in the name of love. Before you break my heart, take it all over. So how's everybody doing? What's going on? What's going on out there in the world? In the world? It's fabulous. I know there. I try. Okay, so take the hidden gems out of the vault. Take them out of the vault. Come on, Iron Beard. I want to see one of your bad short films. Is Brandon any of them? From back in the day, when you guys were like friends, trying to throw some shit together. Mm-hmm. It is fun to do things and see your growth. That's one thing that's kind of good. About, like when you're right when you have when you're not on your game or not it's not the greatest. You can see where you come from and you can have a good laugh over it, kind of, and just go. Brandon, isn't some of them? that's so now now you know I totally want to see them now. Of course, of course I want to see them now. Um, you're sure okay. Thank you. I like think now, now I'm completely curious, like completely curious. Um, but I get what you're saying, though. It's like, as artists, we're very protective of our work. You know, we're very, very protective of our work. And so to put out something that's not good is not a good feeling for us. We don't like that. We want to put out something we can be proud of and stand behind. But even at the bad stuff, I still stand behind it. It was, it was just like, like you said, it's a learning experience, a, a time period. It was a moment, you know. You know, I'm tired, but having fun with getting the show together and working with amazing people. <coughs> you are definitely producing a show. And you will learn. Oh, shit. I need more booze. I need more water. I need more water. I need more juice. But you are definitely going to find out through this whole process what works. What doesn't work, what works best. So we have no more. Okay, I'll use this one. Uh, what works best, what doesn't. Um, you're definitely going to learn from this experience. And if you do another show or another series or anything, you will definitely learn. That's what's great about this. I gotta pour some more juice in here. It's a, it's, a, it's a little too much booze for me. And, and tonight, I wasn't ready for all that. There we go. 
That should help a little bit. Cheese and crackers. I was like, um, excuse me. It's so strong. All right. Um, so yeah, so you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot about this. My sister's on. Ooh. That's going down slow. There we go. I just took a swig and it's like going down slow. I was like, why is it going down slow? So yeah, so you'll learn a lot about yourself when you do projects. You start you have to start from somewhere to get where you are today. And I always laugh at the first my first show ever as a host, I, I said so ten thousand times. Yes, I remember that too, yes. The old karate films, Bruce Lee stuff. Um, ooh, don't matter that coming in a moment. Um, so yeah. But how's everybody doing tonight? What's going on? Tell me, tell me some stories. What's going on? What's happening? I'm almost tired of hearing my own voice at this point. I'm like, I'm like getting, I'm getting tired of myself. I'm like, if I hear James Lachey's name one more time, I'm, gonna just, I'm just gonna throw myself off a bridge. I feel like I, I feel like I've just been talking all the time. The Passing, a horror film. Ooh, The Passing. Well, you went into horror. You're trying to be what's his name before he was what's his name. Okay. Your bank account was hacked. I've been there. I have been there. I have been there several times. It is not fun to have fraud on your account. It's not fun at all. Brandon was the killer. Oh, that's so funny. Oh my god. Now I really want to see it. I really want to see it. It was a short film, I got time. It was a long film, I got time. They just watched Joe, Joe Coy, who's I know Joe Coy, and he's a funny, he's a nice guy in real life. Um, very funny, I'm sure. I haven't watched it on Netflix yet. I've known him for years. He's good. You know, so but yeah, sorry about the bank account. That sucks. I've been there several times. It was just not fun. Where find the movie? It's uh oh. You talk you talk about Brandon's movie? I am Brandon. I, I am Beer's movie. He said it's hidden. You're not out anywhere. It's in the recesses of YouTube. You have to like really search for it. I don't know. I don't know. What's that plant there? I don't know. So I don't, I don't know where it e where it be. Where it be. I'll be your naughty girl, right? We got all my girls. <laughs> love to love you, baby. I love to love you, baby. Okay. I am so curious. Oh, my goodness. I'm so curious. So it's funny. As after all, now that I've, I'm, I'm almost done scoring this film, I, I kind of want to do it again. It's a very interesting... I see why people are composers. I see why people are, you know, do soundtracks. It's very interesting to write songs specifically for a project. Because normally I'm writing songs, just period. I'm in a mood, I write a song, will it fit on the album? Now it's like I'm actually writing to a movie. It's a very interesting process. And I kind of like it. Can I become the soundtrack king, soundtrack king all of a sudden? I don't know. But I like it. You know, it's a lot of fun. It's Friday night, kids. Friday night. I'm wearing my NASA shirt. NASA, I love the shirt. Um, I can't believe it. It's 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 Friday night. Like this week, went by fast. If I went by slow, it went by fast. It's really weird. I'm like, this is the weekend. Could you be a sweet dream or a beautiful nightmare? Either way, I don't want to wake up from you. I don't know why a song came to my brain all of a sudden. Oh, this, this drink is like just a little too much for me. I think I poured too much booze in it. I'm a lightweight now. I let it settle for a while. I'm like, let it sit to the ground. So, yeah, so, that's, so, I've been, so now I'm back to working again. I'm kind of back to business. I'm going to try to do some relaxing this weekend, but I have, like, all this stuff now I want to do. It did go by fast. 
It did. It did. I also worked on Toni Moore's dance show today. I was the director. Um, I am Beard. That's all I have is original music. What the fuck is the question is that? All my music's original. I write every goddamn song. And my producer and I, yes, we make up our own beats. Sometimes it's me, sometimes it's him, sometimes it's them. I have two producers and myself. And yes, sometimes I make up the beats, and sometimes they make up the beats. It's me, James Lodge, me. Or my producers. Sometimes I come up with the melodies, and I have my keyboard, I have my drum machine, and I'll come up with something and I'll send it to them. Sometimes we use it in, you know, on, 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 this, on this latest album, that's me. Most of the music is me. And then on the other, so the other stuff is my producers. Sometimes I, I, cause I, I'll sing the song or, or speak the song a certain um, tempo and way, and they copy that and make music behind it. Sometimes I come up with the music and then I say, can you make this sound like this? And then they do it or we do it together. So yes, it's James Lott Jr. Everything is a James Lott Jr. original. My friend Flo Beto did a song and people were like, it sounds like James Lott Jr. I couldn't stop laughing. He couldn't stop laughing either. I'm like, I guess it could say, it's called Alone in the Club. I'm like, I guess it is kind of a James Lott Jr.-esque song. And we did a song together called Music Is My Life first. And now we're doing another song called I Play the Songs. That'll be out soon. Um, but when he did his own song, which I had nothing to do with, that was all on his own. Um, he said I did influence him. But his song does sound like something I would do. So it's kind of funny. But he's my buddy, so I, I have no problem with that. I guess, I guess I have my own style all of a sudden. It's James Lott Jr. his own style. Because I'm not a rapper. I'm, I'm not really singing. I, I sing kind of on some of the songs. I'm not really a singer on the songs. I'm somewhere in between. In betwixt. That's what I do. So I guess I'm creating my own genre of music. I don't know. It's kind of funny. But yes, no, I do. But I have some amazing producers who come up with great music also. But I write all the lyrics. The lyrics are all me. I write all the lyrics to all my songs. And I have lyric, I have lyric books. I have like maybe I have like maybe fifty songs that are un, that are unrecorded. Just sitting, just sitting. Yeah, Lonely Club is a good song. I told I told Flobo it's a great song. I listen over and over again. It's on my, it's on my playlist. It's a great song. I don't know it's good. Um, but I have like fifty like I have about fifty songs that I just never I've written but I've never recorded. And there's times when I've gone through them. Updated them sometimes, or I'll go through them for a current project. I mean, I might have something that that's good. A friend of mine I'm working with, we just did a song together called "All That's Left." It's it's in a it's in a it's in a vein that I've never done before. That's all I gotta tell you. It's kind of country esque. I've never done country, um, but he wrote a song called "Choices," and I have a song called "Choices" actually. So I'm thinking, I wonder if I can merge them together somehow, some weird kind of remix. So we'll see. Randomly RJ, James Lott Jr. does a lot of stuff from scratch. It is all from scratch. I tell you all the time, I write my books. I don't have any ghost writers. I don't have money for no ghost writers. It is James Lott Jr. writing them. And the ones that I co-write with people, they write their part, I write my part. You know, that's kind of crazy. And, um... All the content I create is, is it's from it's from scratch, kids. From scratch. I did a show recently where they asked about my music, and it was kind of fun talking about it. I just do it. It was kind of fun talking about it. So I did. I, so I did. So I start. People want me to do a singing album. They want me to do a full on just like singing album. And I'm like, that's not interesting to me. It just isn't. I sing on here all the time with you guys, but I don't. I don't. I'm not interested in doing that. But I have added some songs that I'm singing. I have a song that I'm very proud of called Lost and Found, and it's going to be... Oh, so let me... Okay, I'm going to say this again. So randomly, RJ, I'm going to... I'm telling everybody this. Apparently, my interview at Roxy, 
is actually giving more attention to my interview with Maria, my, my a lot. So that interview apparently is making people cry. I'm getting so many messages about how they cried during my interview. So I was going to warn everybody. I guess it's, it's I, I talk about some serious subjects about me. And I share my experiences. And I think it was one of the best interviews I ever had. Roxy was surprisingly amazing. Like, I didn't, I, I love her to death and everything as a, as a person. But I didn't know that she was that good of an interviewer. And the fact that we had an interview that was, it was amazing. I'm not, I mean, I'm like, I'm fucking serious. It's, it's so, it's such a good interview. And... She listened. She asked the right questions. Uh, it flowed nicely, and I just, I just, I'm just going to warn people. People tell me they're crying when they see it about my life. I reveal a lot of stuff in that interview, which is nothing secretive. I've talked about it on here too, um, but apparently, I guess me talking about it got people emotional. So, uh, better views is doing. It's just going viral for me. I didn't realize that's the one, not the one with Maria, but the one with Roxy. That's the one everybody's talking about. She's under Roxy Stryer. The show, it's, it's her own show. Um, she's on Patreon and all that stuff, but it's, just, it's on YouTube. Um, it's, well, it's, anyway, on here, it's, it's here in my link on my, on my page. So when you finish the show, that's the picture I have. That's the latest post is that, is that show and go to my bio. So if you guys want to watch the video, it's on my, it's in my bio. The link is right there in my bio here on IG. But it's her own, it's her own show. It's not with After Buzz, it's her own show. It's called a, a, it's like a night at the Roxy or some something like that. It's very really funny with her name, but it was good. We had technical difficulties at first. I was on late, um, but it was a chat room and everything. Everybody was so nice. They were so nice to me. I couldn't believe how how warm and inviting everybody was. And I talked racial injustice. I talked um, sexual orientation. I talked being raped at knife point and beaten. I talked about um, having bad parents. I, mean, I, talked about, I talked about a lot of stuff. I talked about a lot of stuff um, on there. I was very, very honest and real. I talked about being black in the 80s, being black in the 70s. I talked about being black in the 90s. Um, we had a really good, it's it like an hour and a half, I think. I can't remember how long it was. It was, it was, seemed, it was long. It went by fast, though. Um, but we talked about it all. I, my 51 years of life, I basically talked about. Um, but it's really, it, but it's not like a long drawn out thing. It's really, it's, it flowed really, it was really good. I gave, I gave my opinion on stuff and I even talked about JK Rowling. I talked about that too. So I, you know, I'm just giving, I'm giving my opinion and we'll see how that goes. And I haven't read the comments yet. I haven't gone on and read the comments. Usually I don't read the comments. So, but I, I, but I am curious a little bit to see what, if I get any hatred or not. So I'm always curious. So I'll probably go on there tonight and take a look and see what people have said about me. Um, I haven't gone back to Maria's either see the comments on there too. There were some comments that were really nice, but I haven't gone there either. I've had to learn being a public figure on doing these shows. Sometimes reading the comments is not the best thing. Because people say there's trolls on there. People say shit that just think because they can. And so it doesn't really, it doesn't really feed you in any way by reading the negative comments. Um, I thought about, oh, Chris, oh, Kirsten, you watched it? Okay. I thought about doing the mean tweets thing, like going mean comments. I've really thought about it, going through and, and doing that one day and doing a video on that. I might do it still. Where I just read just nasty comments about me um, and, see, and see what happens. But I read them in a funny way, like, like turn, turn the tide back. Um, you know, turn it back. So I guess something. Like, so I wrote a song and recorded it. It's called "My Opinion Is the Only Opinion." Um, as to the haters, it's a really good song, actually. My kids like it. Um, but I'm trying to save it for my next album, which is a solo album. But I'm like, it's really good, and I'm kind of like, it might be good for me to put it out now. So I don't know. We'll see. It might come out now, but it's it's really. I've been always wanting to write a haters song, so to speak. Uh, yes, I have. Wait a minute, did we have this talk before? I have two grown daughters and I have three grandchildren. So yes, and my grandson and I just recorded a podcast together, which will be out next week, and that was very surreal for both of us. So yes, I had a life 
I've lived 10 lives, kids. I've lived 10 to 11 lives. I'm an onion. You just peel back the layers. There's a lot about me you guys do have no idea. A lot about me you don't know. And little by little, I reveal. But yes, I'm Papa Jamie. I have kids and grandkids. That's about all time. The conversation was really deep. It was. It was a very deep conversation. And I lived as James Lott Jr. is what I lived as. I lived as James Lott Jr. I was many things. That's my answer. Um, the conversation was pretty deep. Yeah, it was. This is going on YouTube. I hope so. I, I'm going to try to put it on YouTube. Yeah, I'll probably put it on YouTube later. There are folks who really are, are watching my YouTube videos. So, you know. I've lived, I mean, I, so, I'm, I'm, so, so just to answer randomly, RJ, a little more. I lived many different lives. I don't believe in boxes and labels. Um, my whole life, I've done what I wanted to do. And so there are times in my lives where I did certain things when I wanted to do them and people didn't agree with them or I thought I shouldn't. And that's what I do. I just, I do, I do, I've lived my life however I want to, but I've lived it very honestly and openly. Always. That was number one. James has like 63. I do. You know me. I have, I was looking the other day and I was like, oh my God, I've done so many videos in the last three months. This next Wednesday, this Wednesday coming up next week. I will have been home three months, 90 days, and I've been busy. I have, I've done so, I think I've done over 100 and some videos in three months. I know I have to be even, even more than that. So, thank you. Exactly. Get them get out there, man. And we are to get them out there. Right now, I just have two videos to upload at the moment. that are left over from the last week. The rest are all uploaded and scheduled. I have two left, but I have like seven to record this weekend. I have like seven videos to record this weekend. Actually, six videos and one audio. I know. Everybody, everybody's like, James Lott Jr., I, you're always on my feed. I go, that's the point. I'm always on my feed. I'm always doing something. I don't know where I get the energy. I really don't. I feel, like I'm, I feel like I'm tired all the time. I don't know why I get the energy. I get it. But I do. I guess because I like what I do. That, that's what it is. And I'm organized. I fit it all in. So are you moving to L.A. permanently or are you moving to New York permanently? Yeah, I put a lot of content out. And so that's why it's like... So for the next couple of weeks, though, I'm not going to put out as much... I'm going to just re kind of re show most of it, like some of the, some of the ones that because I know some things get lost in the shuffle. So I'm going to actually accent some of my videos I've done recently that I think are really good and repost them and kind of put them out there. Um, there's some, the times that are happening dictate sometimes which videos get really big hits. I have a couple of videos I do on being a black man, and those are getting a lot of hits. So I'll, I'll repost those again. So those folks can see that. It's like, all right, they're coming back to Southern California. No more Brooklyn for you. No more BK. I wear, I wear my Brooklyn hat all the time on my shows. I'm always wearing it. To cover my hairs. I miss New York. I miss it so much. I miss going to see my family. I miss going there on the subway. I miss it, miss it, miss it. So you'll be in California again. It's just two different vibes. New York is so different than Los Angeles. It's so different. Oh, okay. Well, go on, randomly, RJ. Is this a late night show? That's right. Tell them about it. Mm -hmm. That's right. But I do miss New York. I do. I love, I love New York. That's my magic city. My magic place. And I do miss it. And I just don't, I don't, know, I don't want to be going there again. He's like, okay. He's like, we're going to help. So I don't want to get started in this conversation because I've already talked on the show how much I need I need somebody to like lay on top of me. That's a whole other story. I'm like that's a whole other story. I'm not, I'm not even gonna go that far because this is not a, this is this is an R this is an R rated show. This is a, no this is a PG thirteen show. So I will not go that direction. And I do the, I'm being make sure it's PG thirteen on purpose, so more folks will watch it. That's the point. So I'm not going to go that direction. 
Um, so, yes. But I do miss New York. I do. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, do, I'm purposely not doing that on the show. Purposely. Oh my God, there you go. I was in the fireworks. Um, you friendly. Exactly. I'm all, there's folks who do that and do it better than I do. I'll, I'll leave it, I'll leave it to them. But James, I'm James going to see you now. After Buzz TV, I don't know what the fuck After Buzz TV is going to do. I don't, I don't know what they're doing. I do no shows for After Buzz TV. I mean, I'm still, you know, I'm associated with them. But I'm not. I haven't, I haven't done a show. I don't do any shows with them right now. But I have no idea what they're doing. To tell you the truth. I'm sure I get emails somewhere, but I'm not doing a show with them right now. So, I don't know. To tell you the truth. What television are you watching? Um, this week I haven't watched anything this week, actually. I've been so busy. Um, I haven't watched anything. That went quickly. I know. I changed it, though. I changed the topic. Um, yeah, the fireworks are loud. Um, I, well, I just, well, at the beginning of the show, I talked about that. So I'm recording the first two episodes this weekend and I have, I'm in talks with two big former actors of the show. I don't want to give it away yet, but I'm in serious talks to have them on the show. So I'm, you're going to, you guys are going to die. If you're a friend of girl, if you're a fan of girlfriends, you're going to die who I got. That I'm talking to. I just want to. F- I just want to finalize it first before I make the announcements. Make the announcements. But it's really some good guests. I have some good. I have some good guests. I can't tell you guys. Can't tell you. But I have some good. I'm gonna talk to some good folks. You guys will be shocked. Um. But yeah. So I. So I. So like I said. Yeah. I have new. Po- at the beginning of the show, I was talking about this. I have new podcast. I have a bunch of new stuff coming out. So this week. I have a bunch of stuff coming out. Um, I have a great interview with my friend who's a trans actor. who's nominated. For, he's the first trans actor nominated for an Emmy. My friend Scott Turner Schofield, he's great. Uh, my grandson, um, Patricia Darbo, and I talked. I have, a lot, I have a lot of stuff coming out. The Emmys, I'm doing an Emmy special. I have a lot of stuff coming out. And it's all for JLJ Media. So, so folks, you know, I, yes, I'm associated with AfterBuzz TV still. Um, but all, this, all these podcasts are mine. JLJ Media. They're all under my umbrella. Um, I'm building my empire now. And they know that. And they, and they totally know that. They're, they're supportive of me, so that's not, not even an issue or anything. Yeah, Rami RJ, you missed a lot in the beginning. I gave, I gave the church announcements in the beginning of the show. But you can always watch it later and find everything I said. But I gave a little rundown of like kind of what's going what's gonna to happen. When you come in late, that's what happens. That's like when you go to a party late and there's like no no half the food is gone. You get what you get, right? You get like you get the scrapes of the macaroni and cheese. You get the two chicken wings that are left in the corner. And you get that burnt end piece of the ribs in the corner. That's what you get. What is the benefit of doing with JLJ versus working with an outlet like AfterBuzz TV? Oh, how that's a great question. Very good question. When you come to JLJ Media. I allow you full autonomy. You get to do whatever it is you want for your show. My thing is, I am here to assist in large ways. I am here to showcase your vision. There's not any red tape. You don't have to ask 10 different people what's going on. Um, and you are allowed to do what you want. That's kind of, that's kind of, that's kind of what. Uh, JLJ Media is about. I really do. I really do want to see your vision met, and if you succeed or fail, at least you can go. Well, at least I did what I wanted. I want you to be able to walk away and go. So this show didn't make it. But I had a great experience doing it, and JLJ Media and James were really good to me. So that's kind of like that's kind of the, the that's the uh, the crux of coming to me now. You have to pay me because my sh- my network is is not free, it's paid. So all my shows that I have on there, they're not me. They 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 pay me. So that's a little different than AfterBuzz TV. So, but with 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 with, with payments, you get full James Law Jr. You get a great you get great attention. You get resources that you may not get with AfterBuzz. Um, I have a great reputation, and that's what it is. You know, it's um, yes, it's funny. I don't want. I don't want to be. 
this place that just pours out stuff. You know what I mean? I want to I want to make sure that I'm not going to do just do 30 shows to do 30 shows. I will do 20 shows that are good and make sense. Right? That's what I'll do. I'll do 10 shows that make sense. Um, every show that I do, there's a specific reason why it's done and why it's on my network. You know, Forever in a Day, that's a soap podcast that's not done. That's something outside the box. Have it on my network. The show Fairview Heights is a comedy drama between a gay man and a straight man that's not being done. So I'm, I'm picking things that actually are different. Doing a girlfriend's after show. The fans asked me to do it, so I'm doing it. Um, when called, I do the Hallmark Channel stuff because they, they love our content, me and Marissa, and they love our content. So I pick certain things. This left-handed, this left-handed podcast is actually doing way better than I thought it was going to do as way more rewarding than I thought it was going to be about left-handed people. So I think outside the box. You know, so, and the new podcast, all the new podcasts and shows that come on my network, I like their concepts. I'm in talks to have another one. I don't want to give away all their business, but just that, let me just say their demographic is black women over 30 and about life. And I love this, the, the, the duo that wants to come to my network. So we're in talks to come to my network. Um, and, and again, it's an, it's, a, it's an area that, you know, I'm going to do a show with James. People go, <laughs> well, you know, we could develop a podcast, actually, for my, for my series. We could. Find something we both. You're already doing J-Lo or whatever at After Buzz or whatever. But we can, we can, figure, we can figure something out. Mm-hmm. We'll figure something out. But that's the thing. I love collaboration. I love to be able to collaborate with people. And that's why, you know, in my JLJ Media book division, I have seven co-writers. I have people of all walks of life that are writers, and I'm letting their visions be heard. You know, that's kind of the thing. It's like I people gave me my opportunity, so I'm giving them their opportunity. And they want to get off the ground, so I will, I will assume the cost – the, you know, the, the, the tech part, all that, that's what I do. Right? That's what I do. Maybe one day, Iron Beer, you'll have a show on my network. It's a little spinoff of something you're doing. You never know. Yes, book division. I do have a book division. I have over 20 books. Let me, show, let me, let me remind you people what James Lott Jr. does. So in the last three months, let me show you. In the last three months... Let me turn the camera. I released this many books. One, two, three, four, five. We're not done yet. Six, seven, eight. We're not done yet. Nine and ten. Ten separate books have come out in the last three months from my book division. A que- I haven't left the house in three months. A queer Latinx person, one of my books. I have an Asian co-writer who likes to write different esoteric things. I have a Latino writer who likes to write plays. So we did two books on that. My spoken word. African-American writer who does science fiction. My organizing book. My book about losing weight. And my friend Caesar, who's also Latino and straight. We did a book on being entrepreneurs. So that's what James Lott Jr. does. So anybody, lest anybody forget, I do all this. That's what, that's what I'm doing. And I have two new books coming out this week. Next week. Two books coming out next week. Then I have my music division. Where I have an album coming out next week. I'm working on that soundtrack, working on my Spanish album, working on songs with five different people. So, yes, I have divisions. I do. I have stuff, I have stuff going on. I'm like, I like helping people. I like collaboration. I like helping people. It's a lot of fun. I love seeing what I can pull out of other people. Uh, someone asked me, would I ever do a digital magazine? No. That's, that's a whole other world. Just, I, I would need a staff for that. I don't have a staff for that. I don't need a staff. That's, that's way... I have friends who do digital magazines. They do a great, beautiful job. I don't have that kind of 
time or energy or desire. That's a lot because you're talking print, you're talking, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a bit, it's a lot of words, a lot. That's a lot, and not L O T T. So no, I I won't be doing a, a digital magazine. Well, I get everything done because I tell I tell people all the time. I know movie division. I know movie division. I love to do movies. I want to do plays. I want to do movies. I'd love to. I'd love to go that direction. Um, but yes, organization is key. Everything in my life, why, how I get everything done. I tell people all the time, I sleep seven, eight hours a night. I work hard when I'm awake. I love, I love to do some movies. I'd love to. I'm, I'm right, right now, but right now I'm working on plays and musicals. I'm writing two musicals. I'm writing a play right now. So those, I, I've been writing them for a couple of years now. But those, are, but right now I'm thinking because of the virus, that play may turn into a movie. I don't know. Because I, 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 want, I want to do, my word this year was stage. I really want to do stuff on stage. So now I'm like, and I've written two one-man show. I've written two one-man shows. Um, and so I'm like, but now everything is, who knows what's going to happen. But I love to, I love, I love to do a movie. I love to have movies under my division too. I'd love that. I love, I love, I would love to put a movie on YouTube. And say, here's my first movie. Look. I'd love to, but I have my po- I have my audio podcast. I have my web series. I have a web series I called um, the Really Quick James Lott Junior Show. I did two seasons of that and some specials. I want to do a season three, but right now my seasons were predicated on me being out and about. With the virus, didn't do anything. Learning organiz- I'm learning organization is so important now that I'm moving. I'm seeing how the chaos of relocating back to California is what's slowing down my career passions. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say um, realization is the first step. Truly amazing. Oh, thank you. I work hard, kids. I do work hard. I'm like, I, this is no joke. I, I am, a, I, what you see is what you get. Literally what you see, what you get. But I work very, very, very hard. I do. Every day, I work very hard. And sometimes I cry because things don't go the way I'd like them to. Sometimes there's obstacles in the way. Sometimes I'm just tired. I just get tired. Um, so, but I work. I do. I work very, very hard for everything that I have. And it's all from scratch. And the thing is, I own it all. That's the thing. So if you come to JLJ Media also to have a show under my a show or whatever, you can still own your product. I'm I'm literally riding on your coattails. You know, it's on my network. Um, and I'll have, I'll have some things to say, of course. But for the most part, you still own your product. That's very important. You should own your product. Own it, own it, own it, own it, own it. It's the last minute and a half, kids. That's it, kids. It goes, I, I, see, I looked at the clock. And it said 10.23. And now it's 10.58. The love of soaps. The DLG Movie Network. I wish the murder type Billy Dee Williams. I love to have Billy Dee Williams in something. But okay, so it's last minute and a half. Now it's getting down to the last minute. Thank you everybody for watching the show. Talk a lot with James Lott Jr. Nightly here on IGTV. We're doing it. We're doing it every night. I hope this helps you guys out a little bit um, with your late night stuff. I'm going to finish drinking this drink. I'm going to shut off my computer. And I am going to lay down and watch some TV and drift to sleep. Tomorrow, I'm leaving my house. I will be in a car somewhere in Los Angeles. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but we're going to see what happens. <laughs> I probably will record it. I probably will record it, folks. So, <laughs> everybody get some sleep. Love you guys.